Last week, I shared a video tour of an apartment, this apartment, that I'm renting while my husband and I are temporarily separated. As you can tell, maybe, it's echoey in here because this is the only piece of furniture I own. In response to that video, a reader emailed me. She asked for tips on how to cope with being alone and lonely and terrified of being single again after years of marriage. She said, I'm in the exact same situation as you. I'm married to a good man, but we needed to separate for space and time apart. That's exactly it. I'm living alone, she said, for the first time ever, and I'm terrified. I work from home, so I work all day alone. I have dinner alone, evening alone, I sleep alone, and then I get up the next day and I do it all over again. Weekends are even worse for loneliness. This is no way to live. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. How do you be happy with no one to do things with? First of all, let me say it's hard. It really is. It's especially hard when you're married to someone that you love but you just aren't happy together and you know that you could be happy with other people or that you'd be happier in separate homes or in separate lives. It is still so painful. One thing that I always remind myself is that it's hard to be alone, but it's harder to be with someone that you're not happy with. And that's something that I really had to work through. I had to tell my husband and myself repeatedly that we can't keep being unhappy together. It's going to be horribly hard to separate, but it's better than being in a relationship when you're not happy. I do have a few tips for being happy when you are alone. One thing that I did very deliberately was I chose this place this area, I knew I wanted to live near downtown because I knew I wanted to walk to a library, a community center, fitness center, grocery store. I needed to not have a car. I knew I did not want a roommate or a housemate, but I wanted to be in a location where I could see or hear other people because I didn't want to be alone alone. The other thing, I guess you'd call it tip two, is that I've joined um, a study group. So once a week we're studying Dante's, uh, um, what's that? The Descent, <laughs> Infinity, The Road to Hell, <laughs> Dante's Inferno, thank you. We're studying that, which is a very interesting study group for me because I'm going through, it's hard. It may not be hell, but it's really hard. I've also joined a book club and that's already happened. I've already had one meeting there and the next meeting is next month. Another book club is coming up, a spiritual seekers type book club. So I'm going to be doing that. I play the flute, so I joined the community band. So I'm really doing a lot. I do fitness classes. I learned how to do centrology. No, centrology. Centrology is called. It's a cross between Tai Chi, Pilates, and yoga, and I love it. It is so much fun. The other thing I joined is the Death Cafe. And I've always been curious about it, but because of where I lived in suburbia in a neighborhood in, in Vancouver, uh, it was too far to go. So now the Death Cafe has meetings near where I live, so I've gone to one and I really enjoy it because we talk about not just death, but life and how to live fully and how to just have a meaningful, beautiful, creative life while we're here. Trying different things is a really, really good way to find happiness and joy and meet new people when you're separated. The third thing that I would recommend, but I haven't done yet, but I want to look into it if I can find time. I'm interested in joining a single support group or um, yeah, just a breakup support group of some kind so that I can talk to people who are going through the same thing. Because yeah, I just think it's important to meet people who are experiencing the same pain and loss and grief and to hear other people's stories and to know you're not alone going through this. Meeting in person and hearing each other's stories and knowing that other people are struggling with loneliness and starting over and marriage problems and an uncertain future financial problems, there's so much. It's crazy and it's awful, 
but it doesn't have to be something that you struggle with alone. The fourth thing that I'm doing, doing a lot of self-awareness and self-growth and um, trying to figure out what in me caused me to want to have this separation. When you're breaking up or separating from someone you love, that's the perfect time to really look within and figure out what do you really want out of a marriage or a relationship? What were your expectations? Why did you get married in the first place? What did you do to contribute to the breakdown of the communication? And, and what were you not willing to, to do to save your marriage? And on and on. So there's a lot of sort of inner work you can do. And it's so important because if you do, or when you do get involved in a new relationship, then you'll have the self-knowledge, the self-awareness and the self-growth to bring forward into this new partnership. Even if you don't find someone to spend the rest of your life with, just having that inner knowledge, that inner self-knowledge and awareness can make you happier and more peaceful. Ask yourself, are you allowing yourself to be happy? And what does that look like to you? What does a truly happy, fulfilled, meaningful life mean to you? It also helps to be able to talk to people very freely and naturally, which you might not be surprised to know that I do often. Like buying this rocking chair, I was at the Habitat for Humanity store called Restore, and <laughs> I was testing it out and testing another couple of armchairs, and people are so friendly because I'm friendly. And so they come over and <laughs> I'm asking them, do you think this is a good deal? It's 50 bucks. Evidently, it's a really good deal. I like rocking in front of my front window. Take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. Mwah! You know what? This is another tip for when you feel lonely and alone. Sit and talk to the camera. Make a YouTube channel. I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of friends. There's probably nobody watching at this point. Not even my mom. She won't even watch my videos. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm making them for me. Not necessarily for you, but me and you, the good reader, the beloved dear reader who is feeling lonely. I made it for me and you. So hopefully you're still watching because if you're terrified and super lonely and you're not still watching, then you can't be that lonely. You must have found something to do. <laughs>